I'm headed over to a friend's place right now. He just bought a new chair on eBay. It's uh, gonna be a replacement for his off-road chair that he built a couple of years ago. This one's gonna be really sweet. Per usual, looks like I'm late to the party. The delivery has gotten here. Yeah. yeah, cool. Hey, thanks for bringing that down. Hey, you bet. I hope you guys uh, don't tip it over on yourselves or something. Oh, those ones are pretty stable. I've watched a bunch <laughs> of those videos. Uh -huh. Some of those guys get pretty darn extreme with them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed, you know, at where they go. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, so probably have to get some tires that aren't two-ply because um, these will right. pop if you run over, like, twigs sometimes <laughs> i just can't over the horn though that's, great. <laughs> that's awesome that's like old trs 80 computer style <laughs> yeah this chair had starting batteries in it for some reason then we've got um these things they're duracell and they're group 22s but they should work better than those for sure my friend just bought that chair off of ebay i think he paid like four thousand for it which is actually a pretty good deal it's one of the early versions of the Frontier uh, 4x4 chair. It's not even called the X8, and it has sort of an old school controller. It still works just fine for that price. Uh, he just jumped on it. He's like, yeah, totally, I I'm gonna buy this thing. It had automotive starting batteries in it uh, with like liquid electrolyte, which do not work in a wheelchair. So we swapped in some other batteries he had, uh, some of those Duracell ones. They were the NF22s, so they're kind of small. But for now, he can at least run around and you know see how the thing works and whatnot. It won't have any range. I mean, most chairs with that size battery have like a three to six mile range at the most, and they only have two motors. Uh, this chair has four motors. Probably not gonna be real good on the range department. I'm gonna try and find him some batteries for a good price and uh, get these things swapped in here so he'll be all set to go. Although I've been awake for almost three hours and I haven't had any coffee yet, and I haven't had breakfast. It's like 2 p.m., if that gives you any sort of indication as to when I got up. <laughs> Probably should go take care of that. She's playing with that giant ball of tape from when we measured it a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure if you've ever been to Ikea, you've seen their little candles that they sell. They're uh, electronic ones. You put batteries in the bottom and when you shake them, they light up and you get sort of a weird flickering, glowing flame. I figured these things were too boring and they probably need a color changing LED. They do have this weird flickering effect that I'm not sure how these rainbow LEDs are going to respond. So I'm gonna stick one in here real quick. I actually uh, disassembled this thing earlier and basically the bottom just pulls out. Got your circuit board, couple of wires that go in here and uh, should be a very, very easy that's too big. Should be a very, very easy conversion. Success, I think, sort of. Haha. -ha. All we have to do now is take one of these, jam it back in here. All right, I think that's sufficiently installed. Now, because this has this flickering thing, I think it might just be red all the time. I don't know if it's actually gonna change color or not. And it doesn't seem to be changing color. Uh, so I just need to hook the power directly to that somehow. Uh, okay, boring, whatever. I bypassed the circuit board. We just took it straight to the batteries. And now if you want it on, you just have to put batteries in it. Um, probably not as exciting as being able to shake this thing to get RGB lighting, but you know, whatever. Okay, there's our index line. <sighs> Yay, now we have one of these. It's sort of like a candle, but it changes color and it just stays on until the batteries are dead. <laughs> Man, looks like a good spot. On to the real project that I actually wanted to do tonight, taking this little knockoff GoPro and attaching it to the back of this wheelchair. I've done a bunch of looking around on this thing. By the way, that's the C500, the one that goes seven and a half miles an hour. I've done a bunch of looking around and I've determined that this case, which it comes with, 
with the bicycle handlebar mount. Uh, as you can see here, these little clamps hold the two halves together. It has a little rubber pad and you can put it on your bicycle or something like that. But I've determined the best place to mount this is going to be right here. And what I'm going to do is take this cover off. We're going to run some bolts through there so it mounts to this. And the camera will basically live right here on the back, just like that. And then there's some RNET power connectors in here that I can pull power from. I'll need to make up a power adapter cable, which I have plenty of them right here. So I'm just going to do most of it and then I'll show you when I'm done. There is, however, a benefit to working on a chair that has a seat elevator. You can get the thing right up here at eye level where you can actually work on it without leaning over. holes in this plastic case because I have to be able to plug this thing into power while it's in here and also I have to drill a hole for the microphone because when this thing is sealed inside no sound will get in so I'm just gonna mark this stuff out real quick and then we can very carefully drill some holes in this thing to figure out what size drill bit we need though all right you can see we've got a hole right here where the microphone goes and then over on this side, there's a hole where the micro USB goes. Time to make the power interface cable for the chair. But first I'm gonna put these tools away. I'm, I'm trying really hard when I work on these projects to not end up with a big steaming pile of stuff everywhere because I get frustrated very quickly when I can't move around in here and my chair just keeps bumping into things, so. Small break while I clean. Now on a permobile wheelchair, it's actually fairly easy to uh, pull power off of the... I see on the camera there's a shadow on my face and it looks annoying on this little screen. When I go to edit it later, it's actually not as bad as I think, but just because I'm OCD, we're gonna do this. Anyways. On a permobile wheelchair, if you want to get power from the chair, you can get one of these RNET cables and cut it in half. In my case, this one had been broken from something else. You get an RNET cable, there's four wires in here, two big ones, two small ones. The two small ones are basically communication for the computer, and the two big ones are power, which are labeled appropriately. Red and black, as you can see here. And we're gonna use the red and black ones so, we can just cut these off. For our USB charging, I've got a cheap Chinesium car charger. These run on 12 or 24 volts. As you can see right there. Now, when I plug this into the chair, the chair runs on 24 volts, so 24 volts is gonna come out of here, but we need five volts to charge this, and we also need a micro USB, a micro USB cable to plug in there. This thing solves all those problems. Basically, we just solder these wires on something like, you know, this has a fuse in it, so we don't have to worry about blowing up our chair, and then we'll have a USB port that we can plug our camera into. In theory, I should probably install a switch on this because this is gonna be pulling power all the time, even when the chair is turned off. It is a negligible draw, and I use that chair every day. So I'm not worried about it. If that was a chair that did a lot of sitting around, I would install a power switch to keep this from draining everything. But, uh, soldering gun still, let's get this wired up. Before I get too crazy though, I am going to make sure this thing works. And I happen to have a power converter right here with a cigarette lighter built in. So, let's see. Hey, we've got light, okay. Uh, what we have to do is basically solder wires onto this thing. Inside the back of pretty much any permobile, inside the back of pretty much any permobile chair with 3G seating, there is an RNET multiplexer uh, right here. And there's almost always empty ports on it. So we'll just plug this in here. Hey, look, we've got a light. That means we're good to go. 
We've applied some electrical tape to this thing now, so we have a nice little pigtail with a USB output that plugs into Arnet. There's a fuse inside here for safety. And, um... I was able to reroute this wire now, so it comes back out of the top and it'll plug right into the camera right here. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and test the fit on that. So we'll stick our camera back on here. Looks like there's some bits of plastic in there from when I drilled a hole in the case. Uh, anyhow, we'll fix that later. But we can just plug this in right here. And boom, there we go. It's got power. And that's basically how this thing's gonna work. It'll just sit right here and record in a loop 24 seven. Until I need something from it. Then I can just pop this cable, plug it into the computer, and remove whatever footage I need. And modification complete. There we have our knockoff GoPro. It's mounted to the chair, it's powered from the chair, and it will record in a constant loop. You may ask yourself why I installed a camera on the back of this chair. Around this area, I'm not sure about other parts of the country, but around here specifically, there's a lot of issues where you get into scuffles with people and he said, she said sort of thing. And the GoPro on the back of my off-road chair was on my was on my old Amy Systems chair previously. Was on my old Amy Systems chair previously, and it saved my bacon a number of times. Because you just wind up getting into random scuffles with people. And I I try to avoid it at all costs. I mean, there's even been times where I haven't said anything and the cops wound up showing up. <laughs> so it, it really pays to have your own literal videotaped account of what happens in various situations. And with recent stuff that's been going on here where I live, I need to make sure all the chairs I'm using have this same system set up. Plus it's kind of a handy deterrent. There's a lot of times where if you're in grocery stores or other places, people tend to get a little bit too close to you. In this case, they'll see a blinking red light and a camera pointed at them. And I found that that gives you a lot more space. People tend to not want to be recorded and it makes them step back a few feet, which, you know, is obviously a safety thing. If they're under your wheels and you go to move and you don't see them, uh, you know, bad things happen. So all around, cameras with flashing red lights, probably a good thing. It should just be pretty maintenance free, do its own thing. And I won't have to touch it until I actually need to get footage off of it. Okay, we've got some decent sized flakes falling now. Uh, it's legitimately snowing now. I mean, I know I said that a couple times before, but we're actually starting to get some accumulation here. This might be an interesting drive. It would appear as though the snow has followed me back from the east side. I had to go over there earlier to grab some stuff. But now, uh, it's snowing here. It was snowing pretty heavily over there. Got back here, it was just kind of raining barely. But uh, it's actually coming down out there now. And let's see how cold it is. It is, it's 30, well that says 33, so it's 31 degrees outside right now because I always have to subtract two from that thermometer. I'm gonna get some dinner, watch a little TV, let this snow kind of percolate outside for a while. Then we're gonna go out with the off-road chair and finally, hopefully, <laughs> get a proper test with the snow. <laughs> Okay, well, it was snowing earlier. Um, it appears as though most of it has melted, though. I guess I took too long eating dinner. I mean, there's still a little bit out here, but not enough to really get a good test of this chair. There's not even enough here to do any power slides. <laughs> much traction. All that happens is you turn. 